I'm Robert Scoble and I'm the Startup Liaison Officer for Rackspace. We're here in the uh, Rackspace studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2012 and we're talking to lots of entrepreneurs. This guy uh, won the hackathon, which was uh, over the weekend. They, they didn't sleep, I hear. <laughs> One hour sleep. Who are you? Uh, my name is Sri Ram and I'm the founder of Reap. Reap, it's your shopping Sherpa. You can't go shopping without it. <laughs> so we. But, but before we get into your uh, product, I, you won the Gimbal Prize, right? That is and Gimbal is the SDK from Qualcomm that, that lets developers like you build apps that are contextual. And I'm writing a book on the age of context. So I'm really interested, that's why I have you on my show, because I want to talk about contextual applications and what's going on, right? Yes, so we won the best e-commerce integration award from Gimbal. And what we use Gimbal for are two things. One is the geofencing piece in the SDK, which allows us to create fences around areas and properties. Yeah. So in the hackathon, we took this particular space and we made it into four anchor stores, Macy's, Nordstrom, uh, Target, and Forever 21. And then we were able to sort of uh, isolate when a person enters and when a person leaves each of these stores, so we are able to build traffic patterns. Yeah. How, how accurate? Is, so this is a big, big hall. How how accurate is the GPS today? You know, if I walk down the hall, how how accurate are those geofences? So, uh, and are they accurate indoors or are they only accurate outdoors? So, it, uh, the answer is it depends. So, uh, the context is this: 50 meters is the granularity with which the SDK works. However, it depends on the Wi-Fi and the satellite that you're in, and also the nature of your indoors location. For bigger stores, if you want to go little store by store, it's not theoretically possible today with the Gimbal SDK, but it is with the bigger stores. Yeah. So if you're going from, say, a Macy's to a Nordstrom from one corner to another, yes, it does. So it knows when you're entering, it knows when you exit, and things like that. Yeah, so. I, I've been talking to um, Alohar, and they actually uh, mapped one of the uh, founders as he walked through a Walmart, and they could tell not quite what aisle he was on, but they could tell where what part of the story he was in, and, That's right. and it was accurate there because the uh, Walmart's roof was uh, wood, mm -hmm. um, and so the uh, GPS went through it, and they could get a, a tracking signal on that. Yeah, so those are the things. In a, in a mall, it should be accurate at least because it's quite large, and yeah. you just walk, you don't run or something. Yeah. Like yeah. So you put these geo fences up like around a Macy's, That's and right. so you know somebody went into a Macy's or left a Macy's. What do you do with that? What What are you hoping to learn to make an app? So what do you what what is, what, what does the get customer see on their phone? What, what happens? So uh, if I'm uh, entering a store, I look at a pair of jeans, I kind of like it, I'm in Nordstrom's, but I want to know more about it. I'm not yet ready to buy it. So I just talk, you know, I whip up my smartphone, open the Reap app and talk into it. And I say, Calvin Klein jeans or Lucky jeans. And what we do is we build a whole slew of power search links, which essentially integrates your keywords from speech into URLs using the open search XML algorithms. Now, not only do we get eBay, Amazon, and Google, the big guys, but we also get the stores in the mall and the geofenced area, and we get your taste. I mean, you might be more the Gucci Prada as opposed to the Forever 21 Abercrombie. And based upon that, we built together a set of, say, 15 or 20 power links. So then you just click, 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 and each of these links takes you to the page in those sites which has that particular product that you just wanted to talk about on there. So then yeah. you can then bookmark them. We have a smart bookmarking facility. So now you've got this cheap pair of jeans and those pair of jeans, you got these two or three, and you're walking around the mall, you can share it with your friends, your family, and say, hey, do you think, uh, you know, the, do I want the boot cut or the flare jeans? As you're walking through the mall, we build your shop visit trail. So now we know what you want to buy and where you are. Yeah. And now merchants get your traffic pattern, we guide you, you are now in a position to make a smart shopping decision. Yeah. If you don't make a decision and you go back home, we have a desktop application that synchronizes totally with your mobile app, and you have all of it there, and you can mull it over, you can do online research, you can come back. We had a team of interns, as I mentioned to you over the summer, and we sent them to the malls, and that's how we understood the shopping workflow, and we leveraged that understanding to sort of come up with the way in which we, we think shoppers shop today. Yeah, this, this, for a lot of people, this is freaky, right? It's minority report walking down the mall and all the signs change to advertising that's personalized. And that's really what we're doing. We're, we're building a personalized world that as we walk down a mall, it's gonna present information that we care about each individual. We're moving from retail to me -tail. In the years of Marco Polo and the Silk Road, the 
conversation was governed by the seller. The seller had their money and the real estate and the resources. Today, you and I as buyers can tell people what we want. We just simply talk into a phone. It's as simple as that, and we now become, shall we say, the motivators of the engine of e-commerce. It's meatail, it's no more retail. Yeah. Where, what do you think is gonna be the, the real utility? Because if it's just transactional, I, I wonder if it's gonna be enough to get people over that freaky line, to turn on a phone and let, it, let, them, let their uh, location and context and calendar all be studied, because all that stuff's gonna be used you know, in fact, I talked with uh, guys who started Siri last night, right? And they're talking about this. How, how can we uh, really understand who you are, what your intent is, where you're going, what your next meeting is, you know, and then uh, present stuff to you. And, and I, some of that sounds really cool, but some of it's like uh, slimy. It's, I agree. It's almost spammy, you know? Like if I'm walking down a mall and my phone's going nuts, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna like that. I fully agree with you. It has to be completely opt-in, and more importantly, you have to get input from me. I don't want you to bombard me with stuff. And, there, and in our research, we identified two things. There are two points of contact. It's tap and click on the web, it's click, on the, on the phone, it's tap, and it's talk, and it's search keywords. Yeah. That's it. So if you want input from the user today, you have to sort of really hone in and get input from them just with these two input points. Thanks to voice, now we have the opportunity to just talk because you know, pumping yeah. stuff into a phone is not all that interesting. Well, I just had Gary Flake on the show who was uh, the chief scientist at Yahoo and uh, ran, ran a bunch of stuff at Bing. Uh, so he's in the search. And, and we talked about uh, that search is gonna go from, from something that you have to be very explicit with. You know, I want sushi in San Francisco to an assisted uh, search or a predictive search that it's going to know you're hungry because it's around two o'clock and you haven't had lunch yet. And so when you start typing sushi, it's going to know, uh, oh, you need a place that's near you because you're hungry. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So context is essentially something that you can't talk about. In the old days, when the only was Google and search engine indexing pages, you had to tell it everything and they had to kind of figure out your context. So now you have, so uh, one of the new startups you've heard of is Nest that American Express has recently funded and they help you with predictive search and recommendations. That I think is the way things are going, personalized, customized, and recommended. So what happens now, for example, with REAP, we know you're in the buying mode because you're using REAP because you're shopping. You're not using REAP because you're searching for the uh, philosophy of genes. You're searching because you want, so the context is already narrowed down significantly. Yeah. Now we are able to build context around you and we're getting data from you. There's a lot of big data, we can do all of that, but most importantly, we know what you want because you're using it and search is the killer app. Yeah. Except that now, because there are so many different search engines, you want to search on Pinterest for images. What is Kate Middleton wearing? You want to look at lookbook.new. You want to see all these, and you want to search in Forever 21. And that's a different from the Google search. Google takes you to Forever 21, but in Forever 21, there's a different search. And then you want to see reviews on it, you want to get promo codes on it. So, so you search on 12 or 15 different engines. So the typical uh, shopping process today is really a lot of Googling, and a lot of tabs, it's, it's, that's the, what it comes down to. Yeah. What we're doing is we're organizing that for you. It's a guide. What you need today is a guide. Something that's smart, personal, private. Yeah. Shopping in this case is for what you want is not public, it's yeah. private. Yeah. And where you want to share it with your family and friends, you want the opportunity and the ability to do so. Yeah. Now, if you have that interface, people want to give it. They don't, then they want you to look after, use all the technology to help me, but just don't keep spamming me and don't sell it to others. Yeah. Help me. And yeah, I will buy, I'll use your coupon and I'll, you know, because I am spending money today and all of the trillion dollars of offline retail, essentially 40% of that is being governed by online research. What is the bridge? Right now, I think we are at the very, very early days of the offline, online, hardware, software relationship. Yeah. When I talk to the guys at coupons.com, it's a billion dollar valuation and uh, they make coupons, right? Yes. They did something brilliant. They built a grocery app so that you could say, hey, I need eggs and milk and cookies and whatnot and some steak. And you can put your intention in and then it, start, it helps you serve that intention when you're at the grocery store. Are you thinking about that? Like, my, the way I buy jeans isn't to go into a store and just start looking at jeans. It's like, oh, I noticed my jeans are getting uh, holes in them. And I need, and so I will probably put that on a list or 
or think about it or uh, you know put it on my calendar and say, hey, I need to go to the mall and buy some jeans. Yes. Are you are you trying to figure out yes. my intention, my context before I get to the yes. mall? Yes, it's all about before your decision making process. Now shopping is vast, so grocery shopping is different from generic merchandise shopping. Yes. So we chose to identify that subset. Where is the most active internet user today? It happens to be a millennial largely female, and maybe housewives with young children. Yeah. So they are the demographic now we let's be out. honest, my wife buys all my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> our, we had seven girls and two guys in our nine intern group. The guy said, my mom buys my stuff, so I don't shop. <laughs> well, yeah. somebody shops for you. It's the mom or it's, and, and the 20-year-old and the millennial uh, females, they love it. They are shopping, well, not all the time, a lot of the time. Yeah. So we chose to focus, as a startup, we have to really segment where we go. So we chose to focus on that group and really understand what they do. And Pinterest is great, but they show things off. It's their identity. It's not what they're buying. Yeah. What they're buying is that $50 dress at 50% off that they don't want anyone else to know except their close friends and family. Yeah. How did, how did, so tell me about the, this new API that you're using, the Gimbal yes. API, and, and uh, why did you win? What, what were they looking for? So they were looking for two things, technical depth and expertise, and actual uh, value at the end user. So there were, there, there, uh, all, uh, there were uh, apps in different sites, uh, restaurant apps, car apps, and we were a shopping app. They see shopping, in fact, they have a demo which is called Mall Mart, and they show that demo uh, in, to the developers. So they, they view shopping as being a very large sort of space for them. And we also sort of uh, uh, wanted to focus on the fact that in shopping, you're walking around the mall so it's like uh, bookmarking right or your breadcrumbs it's like where do you walk from where to where and that's an important uh, traffic trail it's not easy to get unless you and and your Qualcomm so your battery is only a 4% drain it's really brilliant so because of that we decided to really focus our energies on gimbal and, and I think we uh, we have been pleasantly surprised by how good it is and how valuable it is now the bonus was they have something called an intense uh, uh, sensing engines. They can tell you without you telling me anything, whether you're male, you're female, your uh, your age, sort of demographic, what your likes are, because they are sensing from different things that you do on the phone. So they've built a uh, big data, shall we say, algorithmic backend that automatically computes without your input uh, profile, yeah. and so we can leverage sort of that. like Facebook has. I mean, this is why Facebook has all that data f about you because it can serve you. Not just ads, but it can serve you news and information based on who you are. I mean, I, I click, I like the San Francisco 49ers, and all of a sudden I get 49ers news on my feed, right? And that's the future I, uh, for a whole r range of things. And it's going to be interesting to see guys like you, where you take it, because uh, the phones are getting better, the, the SDKs are getting better. The, this gimbal SDK is just a few months old, right? Yes, it is just a few months old, but it's uh, being used by some large organizations, uh, uh, very, very large organizations outside the US and Japan. So it's a production ready. Uh, we asked those questions yeah. because we didn't want to sort of uh, stake our time, energy, and effort on this, but uh, we were very pleasantly surprised. They're, uh, uh, they're production ready, they're being used by large organizations. There's a huge commitment by Qualcomm behind it. and. Uh, it works, yep. uh, you know, and for us, I think it was a, a great find, so now we can build on top of that. So we expect to start building Geofence database. So uh, uh, one of the plans over the next few weeks is Stanford Shopping Mall and the Westfield Valley Mall. So we're going to start staking them out, and we're going to start giving people apps, and that's the end of the store, and say, hey. Real, real fast before we end up, did you have any screenshots? That you, you enter what you're, uh, what you're searching for out here, yep. and what happens is we automatically build for you power search links, so if you look at it, there's web search with Google, there's image search with Google, there's search with Pinterest, there's search with Amazon based upon your profile. Then you go around searching, and when you find some things, you can bookmark them. And when you, so these are all a different set of engines that you can find. Yep. And when you bookmark them, you get all of the bookmarks in one place. Uh, you can build your search. So you want, a, you want lucky sweet and low jeans, you want boot cut jeans, you want flare jeans, and each of these are different searches that give you a different set of results. So we let you build a, a category of all of your searches yep. there. And By the way, there's another company that uses uh, Connect sensors, Microsoft Connect sensors. You, you spin in front of it, and it tells you the size of your jeans, and so it knows exactly what to order. And are you going to do, uh, so if I'm walking into Stanford yes. Mall with this app, 
it'll tell me what stores to go to to yes. find these jeans and which one has the lowest price and that kind of thing. Exactly. And then you could also show me online how much I'll save if I have it shipped to my house or whatnot, right? Yes. So you can tell where these kinds of apps are going to go. It's going to be really interesting to watch these. What did you win from the, winning the, the uh, competition? So we won $5,000 from one prize and uh, $500 in another prize. And more importantly, we won significant marketing uh, uh, yeah. assets from uh, the companies. Yeah. So uh, uh, Qualcomm is, uh, uh, says, hey, if you want to come down to San Diego, we'll work with your team. We'll try to get you guys you know, inside uh, our developer group. So we, uh, that's worth a lot more than just you know, the money. And you're, you're actually building a company. A lot that's of the cool. people at Hackathon are, are goofing off a little bit and just trying to do yeah. something cool uh, to get their, the praise of their peers. Where do we uh, follow you as you build this company out? Uh, GetReap.com is the website. Right now you can sign up for an invite. We want uh, people to sign up for invites. Uh, we are looking for early stage investors. Uh, we have a small amount of seed money. We have an office in downtown Mountain View on Castro and Dana. So if you're into shopping, we've done a lot of shopping research. We think we know the game. Uh, talk to us. We want to talk to you. Very cool. Thank you so much for showing it to me. Thank you very much, and, and Robert. Congrats on winning uh, the hackathon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.